As soon as you walk into the apartment, after passing the bathroom, there's a stand with a computer modem, keyboard, a fax machine pushed up against the left wall. Along the same wall is a closet about the size of a baby's room. Almost directly across, besides the television set, is a 30-gallon aquarium filled with goldfish. A school of seven, perhaps. Charles kept his living room shades open, his curtains flapping in the cool breeze blowing a huge gust of wind that circulating air through the, out the whole apartment. He owns one of those five foot two inch refrigerators, just enough to carry himself food throughout the week. An old gasoline stove was nothing fancy, but his kitchen sink was huge, almost the size of an infant's basin. Underneath the sink, I mentioned earlier, was an off-white chrome combination safe box filled with files, savings, bonds, bill receipts, you name it, all kinds of things. One bond managed to accumulate as much as up to $4,000 throughout the years. Not a lot, but an impressive amount to circulate someone as in Charles's status. A thick cloud of smoke filled the apartment that Thursday morning. Something woke me up, Charles thought. I don't exactly know what, but whatever it was, it was just enough time for me to split. Get out of there. As I knocked myself and to senses, what sounded like children playing in a parking lot as usual wasn't at all. But indeed, the terrifying sound of fearful screams, women and children running, panicking throughout the halls. I'd watch them from all five flights of stairs, quickly shook it into consciousness. It's a fire, it's a fire throughout the the whole place passing, pacing my apartment floor, confused. My adrenaline started to pump. Nearly naked, dressed in just pajamas and socks, no shirt, nothing. I went to my closet and threw on the first thing I saw. I felt my hand grab some, something with a sock attached to it. By now, the fire had consumed the entire fourth floor. I had minutes, no, seconds, to get to the hall outside. I quickly glanced over at my aquarium and thought, damn, I have to leave it as much as I wanted to take, as, as, as much as I wanted to take as many things as I could. Finally, I was dressed racing throughout the front door with my sweat dripping my forehead, I reached my hand into the front pocket, then pulled it back out and grabbed the doorknob. Ouch! I screamed. The brass bar was too hot, scorching hot. I burned my hand. Oh, shit. 
right then, I knew this fire was serious. More serious than I expected a few moments ago, but I still didn't have it. My bolt on. As much as I walked throughout the back entrance, choking, coughing from the thick black smoke filling the huge long room, I could see my belt draped over the closet door in my mind as I reached down the first flight of stairs. I was thinking, oh, shit. I ran back and grabbed my stuff. No, I can't do that. I won't make it out. Contemplating what I should do, carrying back my thoughts in my head in the apartment. The back door was open just as I lived the moment ago, just as I left moments ago. So I started my way out into the hall, grabbed my belt, and could feel the floor quake beneath me. We had lost another floor. Oh, shit. I, clear, clear, I carelessly stepped back into my kitchen. There was a kitchen sink obliviously to leaving behind my savings bond that I mentioned about earlier. Sitting by the aquarium, I was thinking as I stood on my back porch anticipating a safe jump. My knees shook, butterflies fluttering in my pit of my gut. I leaped out off the banister, the blood rushing from to my head, breaking my fall. I ran to my car. An old navy blue cutlass Supreme, I was driving, parked across the street. I could see fire trucks and police cars parked up the street. There was no one else around. Everyone had already left. It was just me. Damn, stretching my eyes wide, my hands out to open the car door, thinking, I left my keys upstairs. The thought of where would they be? Where? Oh shit, in my jeans pocket. I had no, no, I couldn't have left my keys. I could see smoke bursting out of the, one of the buildings. Window, that's what I thought. It looked dark and sickening anyway. As I was saying, I could feel the weight of my front pants pocket. It must have been my keys. Yes, they're in my pocket. Slipping my right hand deep into my pocket. Good, good. Still looking around to see if anybody was there. No one, no one. Everyone had already left. The sound of loud sirens unnerved me. I was all so sad. It was terrible. I stretched my car, stepping into it, searched, turned on the ignition, pumped the gas to only follow traffic as I left department complex, nowhere to go, thinking of what to do next. I could have driven around for hours. I was hungry, depressed, not a cent to my name. I 
half a tank of gas when I started out now almost empty. It's Wednesday. I wasn't getting paid until Friday at my job. I knew this was going to be the longest day of my life. I had a doctor's appointment on the 8th and the following month, but what am I going to do now? I have to cancel. I still had to go to work. It's September, and I have to find a place quick. It'll be getting cold soon. All of these thoughts was going through my head. The authorities closed off the street as if it were a crime scene or something. I couldn't get my money. I tried to get back into the apartment. I couldn't I remember going to work, then driving back and forth place to place. Damn, what do I do? I did this for four days, for weeks. It screamed, it seemed like forever, like scavenging as a stray cat lurking through the dark alleys in the night for food. But I felt helpless. The nights were longer. I talked to the teller at the bank, said she couldn't do anything, said that she needed the paper. I lost it and my ID, the driver's license, everything in the fire. She wasn't going to hear it all. I'm sorry, we can't do anything unless you have a positive ID. Well, we can't can't help you. When she said that, it felt so bad. I felt hurt. I didn't believe it. What the hell was going on? But what could I do? Nothing. But go back to my old place and try to suffer through the ruckus and find stuff that well, this could be burned by now, and my driver's license, everything. Charles thought, discussing it, thinking it, threw out over and over again to his head. Needless to say, up the street, back in the fire scene, at about seven o'clock that afternoon, after a huge bobcat, tractor trailer truck, yeah, those ones, the orange ones, parked up the way. Hey, look over here. One of the workers said, I shouted, the first fellow who asked, lift, who asked lifted his orange hat off of his head, leaped out of the truck watching safe wonder what's the combination I overheard him asking for this safe. They began talking to one another. Meanwhile, at Charles's job, he couldn't help but think so strongly about his place as if it were still standing, but he knew it wasn't, wishing he at least try to sh take something of value that would get him through till he got his stuff together, thought. The days had managed to fill out. It was 11th apartment complex. Almost a month had gone by. And it was September now, 
September 24th. It was freezing cold that night. 12 days before I would be seeing the doctor. Maybe they could write a script or something. I'd been getting calls for man lords around the city on my cell phone, but still, no word on my money leaving my car. Each day that passed got colder and colder. It was afternoon. Would you believe it? Even rained on me a few times. I think for that short length of time, I couldn't wait to go to work. All my money, what the gasoline, food, everything was going. Depressed, sad. too much going on to be sad. Well, I don't know. I had to, I had to do something. And would you believe it? Through all of this, I was homeless now. Damn, I can't let anyone at work know. It's irritating. But I understood, I felt like telling him, but I couldn't. It seemed as much as I wanted to tell the doctor, I couldn't. I wanted to leave, just get out of here, get it over with. The days I had off of work were the longest. I was actually living out of my car and living at work. One incident, I was pulled over for driving too late at night in an inconspicuous area and the officer asked to see if my ID. I had to tell him the truth. I mean, I don't have anything. What was he gonna do? I should have waited. And at least pulled out my registration. Earlier, Wednesday afternoon, I thought, hmm. Huh, his flashlights blinding me. My sight, I couldn't see anything ahead of me. I presume he let me go because he knew what was going on. You know, the fire in the apartment? Oh well, the whole complex had burned down. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna get out of this? I said, scuffling through my backpack. Charles jumped out of his bed in a frantic, startling rage, out of sleep, into slipping, seeping, slipping back into consciousness. Apparently, two planes just crashed into the World Trade Center, one reporter says on the news. Damn. Are you there? Dan, Dan, knocking on the door. Danielle? She cried out. My eyes suddenly opened. It was all a dream. The story was, wow. I tried to figure it out. What my strange dream meant I couldn't believe it. <clears throat> what I was hearing on TV as I was dreaming, eyes glued to the set, thinking I must have slept with the television on that night. I looked around the apartment to see if it were really a dream or was really happening. And it did. At least the part about the World Trade Center stuff. Everything was so real. I actually
actually dreamt the whole thing right in my sleep. Happily, hoping my safe was there. Everything just was hard to me that night. And Danielle and I, my neighbor, picked up the stuff from there and left and went off. That's it. That was a dream.